Hello, everyone. Welcome back to yet another special episode of Technicali. Um, this one is far more special. Well, we can't say far more special, but this is the, an auspicious one because today we're joined by a distributor of Africa CEO, Norman Moyle, who's graciously decided to join us on our little merriment into conversations in different spheres of um, of tech and uh, tech some coverage. Uh, so before we get into that, I'll let, uh, obviously joined by um, Rufaro, the developer, and Edwin, um, the media guy. Um, and um, so just the briefest of backgrounds on DPA. DPA is, um, is an Econet subsidiary an Econet, or part of the Econet family of companies, but their main aim is basically just renewable energy. So I'm pretty sure you've heard or seen of their projects across Africa, but to properly get into that, um, I'd like uh, Norman to walk us through uh, DPA and all it's about. Uh, thank you, Valentine. Um, I think, and um, uh, good day to the, uh, your viewers and your listeners. Um, Distributed Power Africa, we, are, we consider ourselves a Pan-African uh, distributed player, energy player, uh, primarily renewable energy partner. Uh, we are everything energy in the continent, and we're trying to address some of the chronic uh, energy crisis that we are seeing. I think a major infrastructure issue in Africa is to fix the energy uh, challenge. And so that's how we started building the business uh, Distributed Power Africa, focusing primarily on com com commercial and industrial players that needs power, uh, telecom players that needs power, and we are now shifting into homes that needs power. With COVID, we now have got home people working from home and studying from home. And the need for stable power is key just to even remain connected and for the economy to really operate and function. So we look at that spectrum as our key focus area. Um, and we consider what we call embedded generation is our preferred um, route to market where we show up to your office or to your home and we are saying your roof is a dumb roof because it's not sitting there gathering a lot of dust. So why don't we just spruce it up and put in some panels on top of it so it becomes a smart roof. Uh, once you start generating power, you can actually power a good part of your home or your business during the day using solar. I'll visit you again and I would like to put some storage so that during the day, you are likely to be generating more power than you need. And so we put it in the battery and you can even use it at night. The journey should be able to take you off grid. We think, we believe the future is in every home and every business being able to generate its own power and being able to consume its own power. Even better still, it can even start selling power to the next building, where then you become what we call a prosumer. You can produce, you can also consume, and you can actually earn an income out of utilizing your roof. So if you have a business, it's your car park, it's your roof, it's some of your facilities, they all can start utilizing energy. And as you know, we can really pack up a lot of power on top of your roofs and empower most of your business needs, uh, whether it's in Zimbabwe, South Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, Ivory Coast, those are some of the markets that we're operating in. Um, so I'm actually happy that uh, one of your key focus areas is residential um, installations, because in 2017, there was about 573 million people in sub-Saharan Africa that didn't have electricity. Um, so I wanted to just find out what has DPA been doing um, since it started operations um, to achieve the sustainable development goal, which is targeting universal access to electricity in 2030, and particularly how extensive is the DPA network of grids and installations in Africa? So there are very different segments that one has to look at from an energy perspective in the continent. So there is what we call the CNI, which is the commercial and industrial players that needs a lot of reliable power. They need a lot of captive power to be able to fire up their operations, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's data centers, whether it's breweries, and whether it's the DHLs and the Unilevers of this world. That's a commercial industrial sector. They need a minimum of 
50 kilowatt all the way up to five megawatt in some cases even as much as 20 megawatts especially for the mining communities and so that's a key segment of the market that we are focusing on the second segment of the market is what we call rural mini grids or micro grids as you probably know we've got a subsidiary business called ugesi ugesi stands for uh, energy in Debele zulu and our ugesi business is now looking at rolling out energy into rural Africa. Now, rural Africa, if you look at certain markets like Zimbabwe, there is a lot of growth points in Zimbabwe. Some of them have not had power for more than 100 years. And yet that growth point, there is a primary school, there's a secondary school, there is probably five to six grocery stores, and there's a community around that growth point, but they don't have access to power. Uh, even in some cases, there's a small clinic there. So we are using this model of building mini grids and building reticulation around the mini grid and building a prepaid payment modality system that is connected to your eco cash, your M pesos of this world, so that a rural villager now is able to actually access power by paying whatever, two, three dollars using their mobile money, their mobile money platform, and the lights can start showing. So this involves a very different way of thinking of how to power up rural Africa. That speaks to the 573 million people you have mentioned there. That's a solution that can speak and solve the rural electrification challenge of the continent. To try to build a massive transmission network, a grid network into the communities. If it has taken us a hundred years to do it, it will probably take us quite a bit of time, especially if we can't even power the cities that, are, that needs power a lot more urgently and could create economic turmoil if power continues to be problematic. So the Ugesi business model, which we have created is meant to address the challenges of getting power to rural Africa. Of course, if you read about Ugesi, you'll find out that we have actually built a model which creates a confluence of energy and agriculture. Because the moment you de deliver that energy to the rural growth point or community, you are actually able to activate some significant agricultural activities. So in Dolwane, in, Ma in, in Matebeleland, we have launched our first Ugesi site, which is now anchoring, both powering the telecom tower in the area, it's powering the grocery stores, it's powering the communities, there's a primary school and a secondary school. But what's more exciting is we are working with a number of developmental agencies and we've created a poultry project around that site. You can imagine 100 villagers each producing a thousand day old chickens every six weeks and being able to commercially actually sell those chickens into the city and even in some cases exporting them. So all of a sudden we've created a completely new economy in rural Ndolwane and that's the way and the route that we believe could be used to transform rural Africa and build and address this 573 million people you're talking to. So that's the second segment. The third segment, as I say, it is the residential. That is a man in the city, whether you live in an apartment, whether you live in a standalone home, whether you're in a compound, as long as you put a roof on top of your house, or in some cases, we could just start with a storage solution where we bring in a five to 10 kilowatt storage solution. Storage is what some people call inverter. We bring it in, we are able to look after immediately your critical loads. Because when power goes off, the first thing you feel is your internet at the moment. You don't want your internet to go off. You don't want your lights to go off. Most likely you like to keep your refrigerator working and maybe your security. Now, a simple five kilowatt system can deliver that. Later on, we can then come in and kit it up with solar panels and we can start the journey to getting you to power to independence, the journey to begin to clean up, to decarbonize most of the uh, 
energy that we find in the continent. So that's a third segment. So you can keep going on and on addressing different segments in that format. So that's how we've compartmentalized and how we are approaching the continental challenge in energy. But we have to start with the burning platform, which is we need to keep the industries working. When an industry goes down because of power or is forced to run a generator, that increases the cost of doing business exponentially. It also damages the equipment. So if you see what happened in SWEPS, we ended up putting a one megawatt there. That's a significant investment that really gives them both energy security and also gives them uh, uh, energy, uh, clean energy and addresses the carbon needs for the corporate.